How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So I received a lot of good feedback from the Joplin Tornado Fatality Map video. So I wanted to make another Fatality Map video. Only a few days ago was the 11th anniversary of the 2011 Tornado Super Outbreak in Alabama. So I've been doing a lot of research on the EF4 tornado that hit Tuscaloosa. On April 27th, 2011, 324 people had lost their lives, including 44 in Tuscaloosa alone. Now obviously this video will not be monetized and I don't want this video to seem disrespectful in any way. I want it to be more of a reminder of those people, a reminder of that day. So let's go ahead and look at the map here. This is an overview of the map. The fatalities range from West Tuscaloosa all the way over to the suburb of Holt on the east side of the city. Some of these points represent multiple deaths in one location. The first death within the Tuscaloosa city limits was actually a car accident on Interstate 359 at the exit of 35th Street. Those two streets intersect right here, but it is likely that the accident itself occurred closer to the path of the tornado around here. It was here that Minnie Acklin was thrown from her vehicle when the tornado crossed the interstate. She was retired and was an active member at the St. Peter's AME Zion Church. She was 73 at the time of her death. While we don't exactly know how the accident occurred, there is an overpass right next to the exit. And I want this to be a reminder to everyone, if you're ever in a situation uh, where there's a tornado and you're in your car, don't get underneath an overpass that serves as a wind tunnel. It's really dangerous. You'd be better off getting out of your car and into a ditch. So just in case. Further down the path of destruction, we come across Rosedale Court, a poverty-stricken Tuscaloosa apartment community. It was here where five others had lost their lives. In this apartment building alone, a 26-year-old woman and a 15-month-old child lost their lives. Another young victim, a 15-year-old, had been parking a red truck at one of the Rosedale apartments when he was thrown from his car, completely ripping his seatbelt. His body was later discovered at 440 30th place, over a half a mile away. The two other fatalities were that of a 26-year-old mother and her 5-year-old daughter. The mother was in the ICU for over a month before she would eventually pass on June 1st. During the 10 year anniversary in 2021, a memorial plaque was added only a few blocks to the south. This plaque was specifically dedicated to those who perished on that day. It is one of four plaques in Tuscaloosa that we will look at. Further to the northeast, we come across Charleston Square, where two people had lost their lives. They were both 21 and students at the University of Alabama. On that day, six University of Alabama students had lost their lives. Another Alabama student, Chelsea Thrash, was found in the rubble of Charleston Square and was completely paralyzed from the waist down. Thankfully, she would slowly regain her ability to walk and would go on to fully recover and graduate in 2013. Here is some footage of the square only a few days after the tornado. You can clearly see the center pool and all the tornado destruction around it. After another residential death of a 55-year-old, we come across the house of University of Alabama student Ashley Harrison, who was 22 and is one of the more well-known victims. Ashley died while huddled in a closet with her boyfriend Carson Tinger, an Alabama football player who was thrown 100 yards but lived. Carson later wrote a book called A Season to Remember about Ashley's death and Alabama winning the national championship the next year. James Spann, legendary meteorologist for ABC 3340, has referenced her death many times because there was a pixel displacement error on their radar system during the tornado, which they later learned caused it to be off by four miles. During the broadcast when they lost the sky cam, he told people he thought the tornado was going to go down Skyland Boulevard. Uh, so again, everybody near Skyland Boulevard, be in a safe place. Everybody in the city limits of Tuscaloosa, be in a safe place. If the tornado actually went much further to the north, James Spann said in the days after he had a feeling that that specific mistake may have killed someone, and Carson Tinker later revealed in his book that due to that report, he figured that they were in the clear. James Spann goes into detail about this and how he feels personally responsible for her death in this podcast. I, I said at that point that that tornado, based on looking at the debris ball on radar, was going to go down Skyland Boulevard, which was about four miles south of where the thing actually went. I had great fear. In fact, I knew. And part of the reason I didn't talk about it for six months, I knew that that probably killed somebody. Um, and sure enough, in this book, let me just read straight from the book. It says, by the time everybody was glued to the television, Ashley, as well as my roommates, Peyton Holly and Alan Estes, were there. A sky cam from downtown Tuscaloosa showed a massive, mile-wide tornado headed in Tuscaloosa's direction. But from this report, we thought it was going towards Skyland Boulevard, well south of our neighborhood. 
and accordingly they didn't do anything immediately and I think that cost her life uh, this is Ashley Harrison she was 22 years old gorgeous girl uh, brilliant uh, just everything you'd want in a daughter if you were the parents Jane Spann is an absolute legend I actually did a video on top five meteorologist moments and he's in it and he's totally a hero from that day and I kind of hate that he blames himself for it because Obviously, that was something that was out of his control. I do know that James Spann should not feel bad because he saved a lot of lives that day. As the tornado continued along its path to the northeast, there was fortunately a brief moment where no lives were lost. However, we do eventually come across Forest Lake Drive, where 85-year-old William Robert McPherson lost his life. McPherson initially suffered injuries when his house fell on top of him. He was released from the hospital the day after the tornado. However, he had contacted pneumonia while getting wet during the storm and then died on May 29th, two days after the tornado. All that remains now is a circle driveway on an empty lot. In fact, if you look around, there are actually many empty driveways and lots in this area. A similar story happened to Hope Hamilton, who was a few houses to the south. She was an 87-year-old who passed after the initial event on October 6th, several months after the tornado. A little bit to the west of Forest Lake stands another memorial. While the first memorial was dedicated to the victims, this memorial is specifically dedicated to the thousands of volunteers who showed up to help after the disaster. This plaque was also dedicated on the 10th anniversary in 2021. Further to the northeast was Cedar Crest Road, where three deaths occurred. Two of these deaths were University of Alabama students Morgan Maureen Sigler, who was 23, and her boyfriend Perry Peak, who was visiting. Scott Adderton was also with them, and he was also a University of Alabama student. Three more victims who were also in their early 20s lost their lives at their home of 31 Beverly Heights. One of these deaths was that of Danielle Downs, the sixth and final University of Alabama student. She was our final University of Alabama student who perished during the storm. All six University of Alabama students would receive their degrees posthumously on August 6th. The original commencement was planned for May 7th, though it had to be canceled due to the tornado. This section of Tuscaloosa is a suburb of Alberta City. 65% of Alberta City, which was one of the poorest areas in Tuscaloosa at the time, was leveled and completely demolished. Fortunately, Alberta City was able to rebuild and has become a thriving community. Alberta City is also the location of our third memorial plaque. Located inside Alberta Park is a plaque specifically dedicated to the first responders. While all of the first responders from that day are heroes, one particular first responder sticks out. His name is Robert Reed, and after helping his own family out of his destroyed home, he heard dozens of cries for help coming from his neighbors in the Crescent Ridge Trailer Park in the suburb of Holt, on the east side of town. He threw appliances and other forms of debris off of them and carried them to safety. Next, we come across Chastain Manor, a senior residential apartment complex where two others had lost their lives. Fortunately, it could have been much worse. For instance, to the southeast was La Rocco Nursing Home, where five others would eventually lose their lives. As you can see, compared to Chastain Manor to the north, the La Rocco facility was only slightly damaged. The residents stayed the night until April 28th without power or water. Five residents then died as a result of lack of care, including both a 97 and 98 year old. The building was later torn down and it's super eerie to see on street view, including this walking bridge that survived the storm. Further to the northeast, we come across the streets Crescent Lane, Shaw, and Keene Drive, all a part of the suburb of Holt. This is close to where our hero Robert Reed went into action. In this area, there were 10 deaths alone. One particular house would see the deaths of three individuals. These houses were cheaply built and it's one of the main causes for so many deaths in this area. Fortunately, to the north, they recently built a tornado shelter surrounded by a bunch of mobile homes. I think this is a genius idea because obviously you don't want to be in the trailer park. You don't want to be in a mobile home during a tornado that's just not a safe area. So city planners should seriously look into doing this in more areas. After the suburb of Holt, the tornado would claim two more lives on the outskirts of town before continuing on to Birmingham where it would take the lives of 20 more people. The final memorial is located in the northern part of town at the Government Plaza. This memorial is dedicated to both first responders and those who lost their lives on that day. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, hopefully you can take some time to remember the lives that were lost on that day, not just in Tuscaloosa not just in Birmingham, but in the entire state of Alabama. 2011 was a tough year, and let's hope that there's not another super outbreak for a long time. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. We got more videos coming out. We have another top five video coming up, so 
Subscribe if you would like to see that. Thanks for watching.